um, seeds first. And essentially, um, I will give a copy of the presentation so that way you guys can kind of follow along as coming as well. Um, but my name is Danielle Davis, and I'm the current <coughs> director for um, serving engaged, empowered, and diverse students, as well as LEAD, Leadership Engagement and Development. You know we love our acronyms. So before we start talking about the budget itself, giving you a little bit of history about SEEDS and what we do and why. Um, essentially, you see up here the mission, the vision, and the philosophy. Uh, I know you all can read, but I really want to focus on a couple things when it comes to the vision. I want to make sure that what we do is cutting edge. Um, so I want to be known as a local, regional, and national level, and we actually did that pretty well this year. Uh, we went to two, uh, we went to a regional conference where we presented about some of the things we do, and also a national conference, NASPA. Um, so that's been very successful. The other thing too is we want to promote social justice. So when we're talking about what CS does and what one of its purposes is, social justice is to make sure that what we're doing um, on our campus as well as in the community um, is all about that social justice and what that means. Talking about the mission, we want to make sure that what we do makes our students, all of our students, feel included. When students have a sense of belonging at the end of the day, they're going to want to stay and be retained. And so that's what part of SEEDS what it does. I love our quote that we have, embrace equality and celebrate differences. Essentially, we recognize that our students are different. And how do we celebrate that? But we also want to know that just because they're different doesn't mean that they stand out any more than someone else. Um, and then our philosophy too, which I appreciate, is support and, um, and advocacy. So uh, the last couple of uh, semesters we've actually had <coughs> protests, our students come to us. And so we want to make sure our students have a right to protest, but everything's done in DC in order, right? And so that's providing an outlet for our students. So that's a little bit about what we do there. Seven pillars, um, and excuse me, three pillars and seven core values. So one thing I enjoy is that we do holistic student development. I don't care about just one of your identities as a student. So we might see you and know your race, but there's more to you than just your race, right? There's more to you than your social economic status. And so we care about that. Talked about the social justice piece, but then also the cultural celebrations. So one thing at the end of the day for us is that how do we celebrate the culture? Our students are coming and they are familiar with and know who they are, but when they come here it's like a melting pot. But we want to let them know at the end of the day that we celebrate and we see you for the culture that you come from and how do we celebrate that. And then our seven core values. Um, one of those is most important is the self-awareness piece and the diversity in creating that community atmosphere. How do we connect? So a two-pronged approach that we do is definitely talking about the diversity piece. Uh, we know at the end of the day that we're unique and we're different, but I want to make sure that we're educating folks on that. And so one thing I love when we talk about introductions, and she's passing out that, um, the introductions is use of gender pronouns. So you might hear me say and introduce myself as I'm Danielle Davis. Uh, I identify with she, her, and hers. So we're educating folks on gender pronouns and what that means, just an example. Inclusivity of all backgrounds and the celebration of culture. The one thing too that a lot of people don't know that we do is we do service. So there's a lot of collaborations that happen with the lead department um, and we not only go out and just do the community service but we're educating the Texas A&M Commerce community, the Commerce community and also the Dallas community about diversity and inclusion as well. Okay, fun stuff. People don't know that in 2015, so we're literally just four years old, um, this is pretty amazing what we've been able to do in four years. If you notice, our programs have increased over time, and for some apparent reason, and I'm going to say that because we have an awesome staff, we are without an associate director and have been for almost an entire year. But if you notice, due to our student staff who's amazing, our graduate assistants who are phenomenal, um, you see that our programs, we've only literally from last year to this year, it's five um, less programs, but look at the significant increase in the number of students that we've served. So I think that's in testament to one, that we're starting to get out our mission and our vision and what SEEDS does, but then also our students are excited about our programs. They're starting to hear more about those, and I'm going to tell you a few of what those are. Rites of passage. This is huge for our students. It's phenomenal. Our students are loving it. It's growing significantly. Um, as a matter of fact, the application deadline is on Friday. But essentially, our rites of passage ceremony is a graduation ceremony for our min uh, minoritized or marginalized students. And this is an opportunity for them to be able to be recognized. I talk about that culture piece and that sense of belonging. And so we have our lavender ceremony, which is for our LGBT students, LGBTQ+, La Raza, which is for our um, history, historically known as Latinx, and then our Regima ceremony, which is known as historically our African American or African students. Um, this program, as you see, just last semester, so we do it each semester. Last semester, we had 167 students in total. 
This year, I'm estimating that we'll probably get to be about 200 students for graduation ceremony. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm excited to talk about something that we're trying to do for next year as well. Some of the things we do is campus uh, collaborations. We were cut significantly just being transparent last year. So without the campus collaborations, what you see is the 35 programs that we've done would not have been able to happen. These campus collaborations have been phenomenal. So with Campus Rec and Student Center, we have Salsa Night and Caribbean Night, which actually happened last night, and the students enjoyed that. Um, campus Activities Board around the world, um, the, uh, holidays, and then also Mardi Gras that I know we do with SGA as well. Um, the club thing, the movie events that we have going on. One thing that I think we're really known for is our Cultural Month celebration. Um, so we have our um, African American Cultural Month and our Latinx Cultural Month, and those are really great collaborations with our student orgs. This year we did something different, and so instead of us trying to do 18 million programs, we collaborated with our student organizations to be able to say, hey, what do you want and how can we support you with that? And they also have a couple academic partners, and we go and do presentations for them to teach about diversity and inclusion. What we're trying to do for next year. So I am happy to say that we have made an offer to an associate director. The associate director has said, yes, I am so happy. Um, it, it's been crazy. As much as I love having a couple different roles, I'm like, I'm ready to pass that on. And so for next year, with us having an associate director as well as a full-time staff, what I want to do is bring back our line pair educators. That was a phenomenal program that we had as a collaboration with LEAD last year, um, and I think it did very well. It's teaching our students how to educate others. We recognize when you're trying to do um, and educate other students, it's better for them to hear from themselves versus just me, right? I'm old folk and they don't want to hear from me as much. Um, also, growing rites of passage. So I sent out an email to all of our graduates, and I've gotten over the last couple of semesters um, a nice number of students who said, what about our Asian population? And how do we have a graduation ceremony for them? And my thing is if students want it, I'll build it. And so I think we have enough interest at this point in time that next year, hopefully, um, we can grow our rites of passage ceremony to include our Asian population and having one for them as well. We want to do more growth and intentionality with our LGBTQ plus students, um, and then also our socioeconomic students and our women. I feel like we need to do more programming in that aspect of things um, when it comes to program programmatic things. And then also, we talk about the social justice piece, which is really important for us. I really need us to do a conference. So a day-long conference, um, if it could be overnight, that would be amazing. Um, but due to budgets, I know that's going to be tough. But a day-long program that we bring to our campus to educate our students on social justice and what that really means. I think they hear this phrase, social justice, and it seems like it's pie in the sky. But we really want to do that. As well as grow our student conference attendance. And not just taking the students, but starting to educate them on presenting. So that way they can get that on their resume as well. So, the numbers. Actually, trying to do a lot with little, I've learned how to do that and be nimble with things. We are really only asking for an additional $8,000. Um, and the reason of that being transparent is we opened and closed our associate director search three times. Um, it was tough. That's why we couldn't have and haven't had an associate director for the last year. We found out a lot of that was due to salary. And to be honest, if you look at the equity across campus, our associate director for seats was paid a little significantly less than the rest of our associate directors. So to create equity, we wanted to increase that salary to 51.5, um, which is what most of those social directors are making. So with that increase, we also have to pay for benefits for the students, right? You gotta make sure that they can uh, go to the doctor and things like that. And so we're increasing that. And then this past year, we actually had two of our GAs, which they can opt in or opt out of that. They wanted to have health benefits. And so legally, if our GAs want to opt into that, we have to cover those fees. And so that's where you see the significant difference of the $8,000. We're not asking for any programmatic effort, efforts or anything additional. Um, I understand things are tight, but I know that if we continue with what we've been given, that we've been really fiscally responsible this year, and I think we'll be able to maintain the programmatic things. If we're good. So I put additional in bold, additional in decreases in funding for cultural nights. Um, last year we cut significantly, and so where we would normally fund those at about $10,000, last year we would do that at about $5,000. This year, if you cut us again, we either would do one of two things, literally decrease the funding or just not be able to support the cultural nights, to be honest. Um, the other thing too is decrease the rights of passage celebrations. So right now, we allow parents to come with siblings. Um, you know, with graduation ceremonies, you get like six tickets depending on the time or even like four. Um, we allow anyone and everyone to come. And so we won't be able to do that. And then also we typically have food for the students and the parents, right, because it's a celebration piece. 
And then we also have for our La Raza, um, we have a mariachi band that we typically bring in. And then for our um, Ujima ceremony, we have the drums and the condo. Those things would have to go, and those are kind of essential until we talk about the cultural pieces. So those are some of the things we did if we were cut. Daniel, while she's loading this, um, I don't know if we worry about this, but if you can make sure Stacy gets these electronically. Yes. Because we're putting them on. We have a shared drive that the committee is using because there's okay. a few folks that are in and out, so okay. they can they can reference them. Definitely. I'll make sure I send it to Stacy after this. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Student service pre presentation, excuse me, for lead. Essentially, my name is again is Daniel Davis. And I'm Katie Williams. I'm the assistant director of lead. So. Talking about what we do with LEAD. Um, we're talking about the mission, we're talking about the vision. One thing that I love about LEAD is the fact that we're extremely intentional with everything that we do, right? I'm like, you want to throw, throw in a program and say, I think this sounds nice. We're looking at what theory they're out there and trying to figure out what does it do to fit our students' needs. The other thing, too, is that we're equipping and inspiring students to lead the change. So when our students come in, they always think that leadership is just a foreign thing, but we want to make sure that our students know that if they want to make an impact on our society, they can do that. And so then talking about also our mission, which is really important and integral to all the programs that we do, we talk about a three-pronged approach, which is leadership, globalization, and service. And so every program that we do fits into that. Looking at the philosophy, which is really important and we, and we practice what we preach, is that leadership can be learned. A lot of our students think when they come in that leadership is a position, it is not. It is literally, you can leave from the side, from the front, from behind, and wanting to know that um, our, it's our own set of unique values and beliefs. And so it doesn't have to be, for example, I know we're in the Bible book, right? You don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to act a certain way in order to be a leader. We want people to know that. And then also it's talking about being um, in a global and connected world. It's not good enough now to just be able to lead in the United States. What does it look like across the country when it comes to um, globalization, leadership? What does it look like in not only just this country, but also in the world? And so we also have our four components and 12 competencies, and everything we do fits into those. So there's four core programs that we do that are directly targeted towards the leadership education component of our mission. The first one is the first year leadership class. This is the 50th year of FLC here on, at the university. Um, this is a living learning community. We have 26 students who live together and also have class together the entire year. Um, we're very intentional about pushing those students outside of their comfort zone, and we focus on various topics related to leadership, service, and multiculturalism. We also have an annual program called the I Experience. This is a one-day off-campus overnight leadership retreat. We, take, we can take up to 90 students and we focus on their own development, their own individual development as a leader. So we focus on self-awareness and understanding their natural talents as a leader. We also have a year-long series called the Extraordinary Leadership Series. This is a variety of different leadership experiences. So this year we brought six experiences to campus. 
Um, two of our more successful programs were Leaving Your Legacy, where we brought um, connected students of color with faculty and staff of color. And we had a lot of positive feedback from that program and a desire to continue that program. And then we also had a great success through our partnership with SGA for uh, Rock the Vote and getting the students in the campus community registered to vote on campus. And then our office also houses the National Society of Leadership and Success. So NSLS is a national honor, leadership honor society. It is also one of the largest student organizations on campus. We offer a local, or a local chapter and an online chapter to our students. And then we also have a unique partnership with Name Seoul University from South Korea. So Leadership Without Limits um, is one of our premier programs on campus. Um, and I'm excited about this because it gives our students an opportunity who maybe have never been out of the state of Texas, who have never been on a plane, an opportunity to literally study leadership and service global. And so we meet actually for an entire year. So it's a little bit different than what you would know with some of your um, international trips. We meet for a year from 12 until 2 on Friday. So it's almost like a class, right? Um, I love it and enjoy it because sometimes traveling international is expensive. So our students only have to pay $600 out of their own pocket, but they fundraise their butts off. Um, this year they've actually fundraised over $10,000. And so you bought a t-shirt, you bought a donut from us. Uh, I know you've been to the silent auction and things like that. Um, this current year we're actually going to South Africa and you see where we've been before and who knows where we're gonna go for next year. So our third prong of our mission is service and Dare to Roar encompasses all of our service related activities. So this year we had our students contribute 1,600 hours of community service. Um, it started with Operation Blue and Gold. We had 231 students complete 12 different projects that benefited the commerce community. We then offered five other service-related programs throughout the year. And then just last month, we took a group of 14 students along with Dr. Newsom um, to Memphis for alternative spring break and we were gone for five days and three of those days were dedicated to strictly service and they contributed over 400 hours of service. So growth and future programs. So as I mentioned, NSLS is one of the largest organizations, student organizations on campus. There's a lot more that we can be doing for um, membership engagement and membership development and we're looking at nuances through Operation Blue and Gold and our, our partnership with Namesville University to kind of enhance that programming. Uh, we're also super excited to further develop and fully launch our new program called Give Pulse. This is a online tool to promote, post, and track volunteer opportunities. Um, we did a soft launch this past spring and we're planning on doing that full on launch in the fall. Um, but this program will allow us to gather institutional data related to service. It'll increase student accessibility to service opportunities in the region. It will help us capture the amazing things that our students are already doing. Um, and it will also help us foster uh, town and gown relationships within the region. All right, the numbers. So you'll see that we are actually asking for a technical, and I'm going to explain why, technical increase of $31,000 as far as salaries are concerned. We're not asking for anything operating. What happened last year is we got approval um, all the way from the top to be able to hire Katie because our students needed to grow. Um, the community service aspects of things. Um, so Katie has done a phenomenal job with that. However, when it came down to the final budget cuts, we were cut about $25,000, almost $30,000 from salary pools. Um, and I get that, I understand this committee has to make some difficult decisions. But when those things happened, we've already hired Katie, I'm not about to let her go with those types of things. And so we had to literally take from operating that money and move it to salaries. So that was a very difficult year this year. Um, so you notice there's some programs that, and, and giveaways and things like that we might not have been able to offer. Well, it's because we had to move that to salary. Um, so I'm asking literally for what we asked for technically last year as it comes to salary pieces. Um, and so that's where you see the makeup is happening right there. If we have cuts, we would not be able to offer alternative spring break trip. Um, I know that's one of our premier programs, and students look forward to that. Uh, but that would be something that would be very difficult for us to do. The other one too, which is near and dear to my heart, and I know we've had on campus for quite some time, um, is our eye experience. Eye experience is one of our more expensive programs, um, and so that would be one of the programs that we would have to cut. Um, if you see, eye experience costs about $30,000. If you cut us that, then that's where we'll have to take it from. So um, that's where our possible cuts will be. Question. I don't know if it's a tough crowd or we just do really good at presentations. Really good. It's just early. 
<laughs> I get that. Have a hand of coffee yet? Okay. All right. And we're moving on. Good morning, everyone. My name is Trevor McCray, and I'm one of the advisors of the African American Male Mentorship Program. Um, my name is Cesar Casano, the current president of the Latino American Mentorship Program. I'm Adrian Watson, a staff advisor for Sister Sister. Iris Baird, I'm an advisor for Mujeres de Acción. And so today we're presenting to you all the Live and Learning Community Student Service Fee. So the Live and Learning Communities consist of four Live and Learning Communities, AMP, LAMP, Sister to Sister, and MBA. Student success, scholarship, diversity, and globalization are the guiding principles for all of the LLCs. Each of these components uh, represent as a whole our mission and work for our students and for the campus collectively to learn. Our mission is really to support our students to achieve their personal and professional goals. And our purpose is just to strengthen them as students and empower them while they're here, while they're learning uh, about their culture and just to be their best on campus. So graduation and retention efforts. As we can see here at the top chart, we have our testing and commerce institutional um, retention efforts. Um, we can see that all our LLCs are either double or triple um, than those here currently at the university. And this is due to the persistent involvement on campus and the mentor the peer mentoring we have established with each of our four LLCs. So our app 93% uh, retention rate is due to intentional programming. So this year we were able to host 22 weekly sessions with campus partners impacting um, 300 plus students. Our scholars were able to attend a cultural enrichment trip where they were able to learn the historical context behind the African American lives in Memphis, Jackson, and New Orleans. We also mentor at AC Williams Elementary with the Aspire program. And also we have involved scholars. We have six orientation leaders on campus, a homecoming past, homecoming king, and three SGA senators. So going forward, we would like to attend additional leadership conferences, also expand our program programming into new recruiting tactics, and also extend our fall retreat to assist our guys uh, with being acclimated to the university. This past year, LAMP has been heavily uh, focused on research. Um, so this has allowed us to present at UT Austin, UNT, uh, Baylor, and here at the Texas uh, and Commerce Student Symposium. We have also established a high school mentorship program um, with Sulphur Springs and have led the efforts in mental health on campus. We were also able to establish the Distinguished uh, guest speaker series here on LAMP serving over 600 students. Um, we were also recognized nationally uh, by Excellence in Education and most recently the Student Organization of the Year here at Texas and Commerce and we're also awarded the Texas Work Study Grant. Um, in the future we'll be submitting proposals for the University of Texas at Austin and we will be taking a, a trip to DC to be recognized by Excellence in Education and also we'll be taking a cultural service trip in May. All right, and Sister Sister has had a direct impact on our ladies directly and also the campus at large. Um, we hosted several programs over the year that directly impacted over 300 plus students. Black Girl Magic taught us about the um, positivity of black women. Hip Hop Squares taught us about our culture, while the fashion show definitely had a little increase in confidence for the young ladies. 
We also host a weekly session for our members talking about resume building, mental health awareness, and then also sexual assault campus. We took them to New Orleans this year for a cultural immersion trip where they were able to learn again about their history um, and then different things like that. Um, community service. What we plan to do next is expand the programs in all ways. We want to allow more students to come into our program to be directly impacted. And we also want to have larger scale programs for the entire campus as a whole. Cultural immersion trip hopefully spring of next year. Leadership conference to be able to develop our young ladies professionally and academically. Big 12 conference, build leadership conference, and also rides at College Station, as well as an extended summer retreat. So when we head us at Stanley, we really focus on three pillars, which is sisterhood, mentorship, and academics. And for sisterhood and mentorship, not only we would like to focus, we are focusing on our organization, but we have expanded to outside the university as well by partnering with Commerce Middle Schools, and we have created just relationships there that allow us to create a pipeline for a and Commerce, and that just shows them an insight of what college life is like here on campus. Um, not only that, but we have collaborated with other organizations. Um, to create events that have had an outreach for over from 150 to 200 students individually. Um, for academics, and we have partnered with other campus departments to provide mock interviews and other professional development opportunities. And one of my favorites is the weekly study hours that just really provide accountability for our students to push each other uh, for when it comes to academics in school. And for the future, we would really like to provide opportunities for our students um, to grow. That is conference, research, cultural speakers, and just overall growth that would allow them to develop skills for leadership on campus and would allow us to expand our Mokita's XUM members not only in membership but also in outreach on the campus as well. Alright, so what are the numbers? Um, so the actual numbers that we've received in 2018-2019, we've received 15,300 for the male groups and 10,000 for the female groups. Um, and in our efforts, we did fundraise, however, it wasn't enough to remain sustainable. So our pres lovely president had the opportunity to fund us. Um, however, that is a one-time fee. And so we're requesting a $24,000 uh, well, $24, for the male groups, $16,000 for the female groups. This is in efforts to increase our student impact um, across campus. And this, um, what we're requesting for is $80,000, and this is going to be for the fiscal year of 2019. So first, notice how sad we will all be if we were to get cut. <laughs> all right, yes, this is how sad we all be. So again, fundraising is an option. It has been an option for us, but it is not able to sustain what we've done in the past and what we hope to do in the future. So taking the trips, our students on a conference, so we would be not be able to afford that, and so they would not be able to do research and also do presenting at the conference, which would de help them develop academically. Uh, we also like to have our students be highlighted and acknowledged for the work that they're doing. So at the end of the year, we have an end of the year banquet with awards, graduations, though, and also highlighting them. So we wouldn't be able to do that if we were cut. So just think about this. You're going to have all the students in your office looking like this <laughs> if we're cut. Okay, so now we open the floor for scholarly questions and answers. Can you, can you tell us why the men's groups were funded at a higher level than the women's groups? Yes, um, so when we had our planning meeting, um, that was actually a question that I brought up as well. And so with our um, increase in numbers, we have about 40 in each group. Um, and the ladies are still working on the expansion of their numbers, and so that's the discrepancies between Oh, so them. the groups are small? Yes. <laughs> With the increase in funding, um, I heard an expansion of the conferences and programs that can be offered to students. Is there also, does that also uh, incorporate an expansion of the groups as a whole? Like, are you able to take on more students because of more money, or is it just an, uh, a deeper experience for the same 40? No, we have actually opened up this semester for new students to come. So I know for specifically um, AMP and Sister Sister, we have had information sessions where new students who are interested have attended. So in order to have the ability to um, fund those new students, that's where the increase in funds come from. So it is not just for the ones that we have. We are hoping to open it up for more students to be impacted and then directly impact the campus at large. That's true for all four. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you all very much. If y'all make sure that 